The 15 Point Plan is part of the Winmate Give Podcast Network. Welcome to the 15 Point Plan Podcast. Chad Heim sitting here across the room from the unaware Jalene Snell. Jalene, I finally gave you one that might not have been as nice as all the other adjectives. Yeah, I'm not saying that as a compliment. Well, it could have been clueless. <laughs> Jalene, do you want to tell them or should I? No, you go ahead. Take all it away. right. So, folks, you see, we have to decide these adjectives before we go. It's however Jalene's been acting that I come up with in moments. Yes, moments before we started recording this episode. When I was reminding Jolene that we keep these to 15 minutes here at the 15 Point Plan, we keep our podcast episodes when possible, as close as possible to 15 minutes. And Jolene just said to me, I just realized today, 15 Point Plan, 15 minutes. There's a theme there. There you go. Yes, it took me only a year or two to figure that out. How many of you had no idea that the 15-point plan runs 15-minute episodes for a certain reason? So, Jalene, welcome to today's episode. Thank you. And now we have 12, so we better get started. There you go. And we are talking about something because we just used up some time. What is today's topic? Yeah, we're talking about time management and using time effectively, Mm -hmm. ultimately, so that someone can achieve exactly what they want out of life. Okay. So in time is this elusive thing, right? Time becomes like a white noise phrase in our culture. Yep. And it's easy to talk about it to say that, you know, you want better time management, but what does that actually mean to you to manage your time? And we know too, if we don't manage our time, it's going to manage us. So we're going to talk about this today. I think it's a, I think it's a really powerful conversation, but we're going to talk about it in relationship to how top leaders in the U.S., also use their time and their time management techniques. Okay. Such as, who are some of the people we're going to hear about? Uh, let's see. If we if we can get to it, Richard Branson, Elon Musk, Sarah Blakely, Naval Ravikant. Um, I think I have one more in there. Uh, Paul Akers. Warren who, Buffett's your other one. And Warren Buffett. But Paul Akers, you may not recognize. He's the one I would actually love to focus on a little bit today. Well, then we'll definitely get to Paul. We'll save him for last. So, folks... Stick with us. We're going to go quickly through these other CEOs so we can talk about some of the lessons that we're really going to get from Paul. Where, which CEO you want to start with, Jolene? Let's start with Richard Branson. Okay. So, because if I'm not mistaken, one of your goals is you want to meet Richard Branson. Isn't that something I remember from I would, an episode well, a long he, time ago? Yeah, absolutely. I would say he's one of my mentors. Okay. Right? Because I read his work, I read his blogs, you know, I watch his videos. I actually visited his uh, place that he built in Kenya. Okay. His tent hotel that he has there, which was incredible. Um, you fly virgin? I d- no, they didn't have any flights there. I just mean in general. If I can, absolutely. Because okay, so- the experience is fun. It's top notch. It's okay. classy. And that really represents Richard Branson. Like he brings an amazing culture to his people. And you think, well, how can he have so much fun and travel so much and spend this incredible time with his family and friends, but still have time to build this empire that he has built. Now, I don't have a lot from him today. I'm just going to share a couple quick techniques. Does that sound good? Sure. And then I'm going to ask a question of the audience. Go for it. Okay. So Richard Branson's singular piece of advice for managing your time effectively is to stay focused because distraction is time lost. He says, manage your technology don't let it manage you. Yep. That means like turn off the notifications. Um, don't be checking email every few seconds. Check your email in bursts. Like maybe he he actually checks his email first thing in the morning uh, before he says the world wakes up and logs on. And, uh, and then put it away to concentrate on your priorities at hand. Love it. Love it. I do the same thing in my world. I'm no Richard Branson. So folks, who do you know that knows Richard Branson? Someone in our audience, we've been bringing you value, hopefully for quite a while. Your turn. We need to get Jolene a meeting, a phone call, a conversation, something with Richard Branson, and I'm asking you to help us make it happen. Oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. I'm not really the fan club kind of person, but Richard Branson is definitely on the list. How about Sarah Blakely later in the episode here? I thought she was actually one of those she, people high on your list, she, too. I mean, I, I named my daughter after her, so yes. So absolutely. basically, They'd be my top two. What you're telling us is this is just a people I love episode. So 
there, there, <laughs> I, I, Dave, I guess there should be a section on you and I at some point later in this episode. All right. Right. We Jolene, should who's the in. next CEO we're talking to? Elon Musk. Okay. And, and, and you know what? Some people like subscribe to his series and people don't. Um, it, this, but he has a couple really simple shares as well. Fun fact, though, Elon Musk says that he's never read a book on time management. And you wonder, how does a person who's never read a book on time management be such a high achiever without that type of training? Well, can I give you a fun fact before you tell us any more about that? Of course. Fun fact. How do you know it's a fun fact? Why do people tell me it's going to be a fun fact? If I don't think it's fun, it's not, not a fun, fun? fact. Just it's call it a fact. Just call it an interesting fact. <laughs> you and, and Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. Everything's fun fact. I, I haven't determined it's fun yet. We're trying to make things yet. fun around here, right. Chad. So- Elon says it's very important to have a feedback loop. Pay okay. attention to this. We're going to circle back to it later. Constantly We're loop thinking. Back to it later, did you mean? Yeah, very good reference. There you go. All right. Constantly thinking about how you could be doing things better and questioning yourself. Have this built into your day. Okay. Let's actually just stop there and, and move on and we'll loop back to this. Got it. Sarah Blakely. Yep. She talks about bucketing your time. Okay. And how she does it is she has theme days. And I'm paraphrasing, of course. Of course. She has themed days. So she has a day for like creativity. She has a day for like planning. Maybe that's the same day, creativity and planning, future planning. Um, she has a day for like marketing. She has a day for customer interaction and connections. Okay. Um, now that's going to look different depending on your industry, of course. Yep. But she has themed days that allow her to accomplish more because that's what the day is really devoted to. Doesn't mean she's not doing everything else that's important to her, which Truly, one of the things, if you read her story um, in the other areas of her life, she also calls them buckets, like being a parent, your health, right? And um, she prioritizes those probably before, it, well, not probably, before any of these other things. Sure. So, so yet she prioritizes that in the morning or the evening, and then the rest of the day is a theme for whatever it is that she has chosen. You know, Chris Suarez does his days like that. Like he says, his Mondays always look the same. They're based on, here's what he does on Mondays. Here's what he does on Tuesdays. Here's what he does on Wednesdays. And then Ben Kinney loves to have the buckets, right? He talks about buckets of wealth all the time and stuff. It's interesting how all this stuff ends up coming around and you never know who you heard something from first and where it all came from. Uh, and we repurpose and we learn. So Sarah's another great one we can learn from. Who yeah, else? Absolutely. So Warren Buffett, I really yeah. love this, okay? We all know and this and guy. actually Ben talks about this too. We often place an emphasis on busyness um, and we spend our days doing as much as possible. It's this concept of quantity over quality. So instead of considering the best and most harmonious use of time. Yep we fall into this trap of busyness. And, and um, Warren has been credited for saying this phrase, busy is the new stupid. Amen and hallelujah. Not the type of phrase I generally use in my dialogue, but it's I might I might adapt that one. To say. That is one that Chad would use in his dialogue. Yes, <laughs> busy would. is the new stupid. Are you being stupid? <laughs> so uh, Warren says to ask yourself, what might you be avoiding or delaying with that overstuffed calendar? Mm -hmm. Our cluttered calendars sometimes help us avoid the things we don't want to face. Yep. Like conflict, intimacy, money, mortality, or just being, like being still, to name a few. Yeah. Jolene, I don't know how many people tell me they were too busy to do their number one priority of the day. Oh, I was too busy to get into the gym. I was too busy to make those calls today. I was too busy to do. Yeah. That's exactly what Warren's talking about. You're just avoiding doing those things by coming up with other crap to do. Yeah. And another person on, we have on this list, Naval Ravikant, he says, um, when you say, I don't have time, it's just saying it's not a priority. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? It is powerful, except I bet you to most people, it is a priority. They're just not choosing to make it a priority. Mm -hmm. They they say, I don't have time for my health. In their mind, though, they know they want to make that a priority. They're just not making the choice. They're filling it with other stuff and claiming that's the reason they can't get to it. Yeah, and some of these techniques that we're sharing from these people, the, this entire episode is geared so that you can buy your time back so that you can make your health a priority. You can make your family a priority. These people got where they're going and they knew how to use their time to get there. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. We all have 24 hours. It's a question of how well you use yours. All right. You wanted to finish this episode talking about 
Paul Akers. Paul Akers. So Ben introduced me to Paul Akers. He's actually in our community here in Whatcom County. He has a manufacturing business out of Ferndale, Washington. Um, you can find a lot of his work online. He's incredible. I'm going to first start with this concept. Um, I heard it actually in another podcast this morning. I, I think, I don't know if it was Tim Ferriss, but he was interviewing someone. It was a CTO and, uh, and I can't remember the company, so I apologize, but he says creativity is not strongly correlated with time management and high performance. He said, my team, I'm not creative. We aren't creative, but we know how to execute and scale. And execution and scale is really important to long-term performance. So when I think about executing and scaling, I think of it, I think of systems. I think of systems making the ordinary extraordinary. Yep. Let's take that a step further. And systems are a process. And Paul Akers talks about a process called the two-second lean or the two-second improvement. Okay. So he's created this phenomenal culture in his organization called Fast Cap of lean thinkers who are taught every day in a short meeting what waste look like, how to eliminate it, and what continuous improvements look like. Okay. So he's fanatical about the principles of Kaizen, which is a Japanese word that translates closely to continuous improvement in English. Oh, I like that. It makes Kaizen. everything, yeah, about waste. So, and which in Japanese, there's this other, <clears throat> excuse me, word called muda. And um, it is referring to uh, multiple forms of waste. But he approaches this word, Paul does, and he says, let's fix what bugs you. Let's eliminate this waste, this muda. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So in his culture, he challenges each person to make at least one two-second improvement every single day because he believes that these small improves improvements made continually yield large results. All right, Jillian, give me an example of a two-second improvement you have recently made or you could make or that you are going to make so that our audience has, I mean, a two-second improvement. What does that look like? Well, one thing I was never consistent at, this is on the personal side, I was never consistent at putting my clothes out for the gym the night before. Okay. And now I do. So I have my clothes laid out in the bathroom, ready to like slip into them, you know, at five o'clock in the morning. And I've noticed how much time that actually saves me by doing that. Okay. And it puts my morning and my entire day on track just by doing that one thing. So it could be taking a few seconds to prepare who you're going to call the next day. It could be taking yeah. a few seconds to prepare what you're going to eat the next day. I prepare my food, not necessarily the food. I prepare what I'm going to eat the night before though, so I don't have to think about it. It's saving me time here and there and eliminating that waste of, yes. hmm, what am I in the mood for? It doesn't matter. I've right. already decided. It's there. I see that because you bring your your bagged lunches and everything is right. already prepared. It's proportioned, right? It's ready to and go. And I decided last night what it was going to be. So this morning when I made it, there wasn't any thought. Yeah. I guess the only argument that comes is like, what if I'm not hungry for that, right? When the day comes or the Too time bad. comes. Eat it. Okay, yeah. so there's some examples of a two-second improvement, folks, for, for you who are going, ah, two seconds, that means nothing. That just means changing channels faster. Yeah, and this two-second lean can be used in every area of our lives. Okay. Um, from, like, the personal to our business. I know, like, in business, one thing I'm really focusing on is creating shorter, more concise emails. Mm. By the way, read Simply Said, and it will help you do that. Yep. Uh, shorten meetings by half of what you would normally allot for a meeting. Okay. So, and there's a question you can ask yourself, what is our intention for this meeting? Yep. And then zeroing in on that intention. Getting rid of all the other parts of the meeting and the other stuff that just take time. Yeah, hiring leverage is huge. Yep, okay. Um, uh, on another personal level, but also in the office, I ordered a mini fridge, and the mini fridge is going to be under my desk, so it actually fits very, you know, for waters Compactly. and protein beverages, yes, right? Yes, my so, breakfast. Right? Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes, not yes. to have a beer nearby after a podcast recording with Chad. Right. When I don't like think it. of beer when I think of mini fridge, so I'm really glad you mentioned right. that. Yes, it's not for beer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, check out his work, Two Second Lean. It's amazing. Um, and basically what he shows is the compound effect that these two seconds have over the course of a day. And then you uh, times that day by five for the week and, you know, by 20 for the month and then for the year. And it can be days and weeks of time that you're saving by just focusing on 
a few two second improvements every day. Now, if you're like a software person or you're on the computer a lot, you want to sort of count the amount of clicks that it takes you to accomplish something. Think, how could I do this in less clicks? Yeah, I, I do that on my phone. I mean, things I text regularly. Yeah. I've taken the few seconds to create the shortcut that now I've bought back time because I can type in, you know, OMW and it says on my way automatically, you know, the Apple one automatically does that for you. But other expressions or other messages I regularly send to Nita or something like that, I can type in three letter codes and it'll spell out the whole text message saving me time. If it's something you do regularly, those are some two second fixes that you could add. There are so many. That's a really good one. And we should ask our audience to come on to the Facebook group yeah, and share their own so that we can learn from you All right, because they're truly endless. And I call it personally, I call them life hacks. Yep. And I love it. I gamify it. It's fun. I'm just using that word for you today. I get it. Right. Fun so, is the word. Um, so please do join us there and let us know what your two second improvements are. So yes, check out the Facebook group as we get ready to wrap this up and bring you some final takeaways. Visit our Win, Make, Give Facebook group. That's the parent podcast Facebook group. And tell us your favorite two second hack that you've got out there that other people can do from moving something in your house to a quicker, easier, accessible point to a shortcut on a keyboard or whatever it might be. And of course, you can always check out 15 point plan for life group if you want accountability as you achieve your 15 points. Jalene, wrap up time management. I don't like the word at all. I'm, I'm keeping that to myself. I'm not getting into it, but wrap up the time management conversation for our audience. Yeah, well, let's go back to Naval. Okay. He's got some amazing quotes that are very pithy. He says, guard your time, it's all you have. Mm. Guard your time, it's all you have. Mm. So I wrote down as I was recapping these thoughts, Number one, get clarity on your own purpose in the key areas of your life, your purpose in your health, your purpose with family, your purpose in career, your purpose with the impact that you want to have, okay. because then you can choose what do I need to prioritize in those areas mm -hmm. today Yep. and be aware of where the muda, the waste shows up and what can be eliminated. It just, I mean, if you take the A off it, it's mud, right? So... There you go. Yeah, right. Where's that mud that you're getting stuck and bogged down into and how can you eliminate it? Sure. Okay. Yeah. And? and then just watch time become something you can control versus having it control you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Those are some great points for time management, Jolene, uh, or controlling your time. I'll say that instead. Time management. You can't manage time. Time's not listening to you. So folks, we challenge you to take some of these steps, Jalene said, go get some clarity on your purpose in those key areas of your life. Figure out what you can prioritize. Create those bucket days like Sarah Blakely had, or think about how you can pound out some things like Richard Branson did so that you can then free up your day to what you need to, to be taken care of. Watch for the muda where it shows up and eliminate the waste that comes with it. Folks, another fantastic lesson from Jalene on time for us. Make sure you join us on our next episode where we're going to continue our conversation on time. And until the next episode, we hope this episode ups your energy and takes you to the next level.